Nestled among the dry climate, cacti, and summer monsoon storms of the Sonoran Desert is Tucson, Arizona. The 1950s and 60s brought with them much growth to Tucson and the surrounding area. If anyone knew about Tucson, it was probably due to many of the popular western films made at old Tucson studios. One thing everyone knew and worried about was the threat of nuclear war. Some knew about the construction of missile bases surrounding Tucson, but most did not comprehend the immense power housed at these sites. Eighteen of these Titan II missile complexes dotted the area around Tucson in rural communities such as Benson, Green Valley, Aver Valley, and Marana. Although each property differed from the next, the basic layout was the same. All were made up of approximately 12 to 13 acres and were at least 8 miles away from one another in case of a nuclear retaliatory strike. The construction crews began their work on each of the 18 sites surrounding Tucson simultaneously in December of 1960, and all were operational within days before Christmas of 1961. These facilities were being constructed as soon as the building engineers could get the blueprints off the press. Construction was begun by excavating about three acres of land. Excavation included digging a bathtub that was nearly 400 feet long, 200 feet wide, and 40 feet deep. This allowed for construction of the launch control center, blast lock, access portal, cableways, and missile silo. The launch control center and missile silo required more digging below that 40 foot mark. The missile silo was excavated by using a dozer and a crane with a lifting bucket. The dozer would scrape layer by layer in a circular pattern and the crane would lift the spoil out until they reached nearly 150 feet below original grade. The foundation of the missile silo was made up of heavy rebar reinforced concrete at 7 feet thick. Approximately 850 tons of rebar was used in the construction of just the missile silo. The outer walls of the silo were 4 feet thick, and the inner ring surrounding where the missile sat was made up of walls 18 inches thick, sandwiched between two half-inch steel plates. The upper 30 feet of the silo were poured at 8 feet thick to allow added strength to hold the almost 800 ton silo door. It was also taken into account that the silo door could possibly need to withstand a retaliatory attack and ensuing shockwave. Once the rebar reinforced walls were framed and shored up, Concrete was then poured in at a continuous rate of 1 to 2 feet per hour, and usually completely filled within 3 days. The silo door was perhaps the most complex piece of the structure. It measured 43 feet long, 64 feet wide, and 5 feet thick. Most of the steel plate used in its construction were 2.5 inches thick. It followed an egg carton construction for strength purposes, and approximately 15 inches of concrete were poured into the base of the silo door. 
It is estimated that more than 37 tons of welding rod was consumed in the fabrication of each door. It was a modern engineering and fabricating miracle that they were able to weld this structure together without warping the bottom surface of the door. Once construction of the silo neared finishing, construction of the launch control center began. The control center was made up of the blast lock, access portal, and the three-level control center and living quarters. The foundation of the launch control center was nearly eight feet thick with two-inch reinforced rebar throughout. Its vertical walls were also rebar reinforced and were two feet thick. The dome-like roof was 18 inches thick, made of concrete reinforced with rebar. The blast lock was the hub that connected the control center to the silo and to the entrance and exit or access portal. Within the blast lock were four 6,000 pound blast doors. These blast doors, including their frames, were installed prior to any of the walls of the blast lock due to their size and weight. The blast lock structure was literally built around the blast doors. Each of these structures were encased in half inch steel plate for resistance to electromagnetic pulse from a nuclear attack. Once the access portal, blast lock, cableways, launch control center, and missile silo were completed, the bathtub was backfilled. In total, approximately 2,255 tons of steel and 8,400 yards of concrete were used in the construction of each complex. The estimated 1960s price tag of each complex was $12.6 million to complete. This would translate to nearly $1.8 billion per complex in today's dollars. It took nearly 5,000 workers to complete all 54 Titan II missile complexes.